everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford to, uh, here, um, and today on the Expansion Podcast, I'm actually visiting with Jamie Parker from Atlanta, Georgia. Been with EXP since 2018, five-time Icon agent. Uh, welcome, Jamie. Uh, thank you so much for having me on the on the podcast, Glenn. No, my my pleasure, and thanks for thanks for joining us. So, um, maybe I, I think you've been in the business. Uh, a few years. Um, maybe you could just talk a little bit about, you know, your background, you know, how'd you get started in real estate, you know, just uh, that, that journey. Sure. So I've been in, in the real estate business for 17 years. And uh, what, what uh, got me into the business is I bought uh, one of my houses and I uh, saw how much money the real estate agent made. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to like, it takes me three months to make that much money. My background is in teaching. So I was a public school teacher for 17 and a half years. I taught orchestra, taught middle schoolers. Uh, and I also taught general music. And I was also an instructional technology coordinator for a couple of years. Realized that that was not for me. I went back into music after that. Um, yeah. So I just started doing real estate part-time. So for seven and a half of, for seven of my 17 and a half years of teaching, I was the part-time real estate agent back when all you could really do is sell HUD homes because that's when everything, <laughs> that's how I kind of started was staying up to 12, one o'clock in, in the morning after I was done teaching for the day, helping people bid on HUD homes online and kind of started out that way. And uh, yeah, so what really also got me into, into real estate is I was at a marriage retreat um, and the people that were running it, and this is very old school, they were like, husbands, if you don't make enough money for your wife to stay home, then you may want to think about a career change. And I'd already been kind of thinking about real estate. Um, and yeah, so it was just, that just kind of prompted me. And uh, shortly after my daughter was born, we, you know, she's a miracle child, took about, gosh, eight and a half years to, to, to get her. And uh, shortly after she was born, I started, I started studying for my real estate exam while I was still teaching school and had a newborn in the house. And I'd see her crawling around around the family room, and I'd be on online, online doing my real estate stuff. If you, imagine, if you can only imagine how dry online courses were in two thousand and six, oh. in two thousand seven compared to today. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, the, the, yeah, co online courses should get a lot better, uh, especially with all the AI stuff. I've been watching some cool stuff with that. So how I got started? That's what kind of drove me, um, and so then I was able to in two thousand twelve. I was able to. I sold 23 houses as a, as a school teacher. So my part-time was making double my, my full-time. And I was thinking, well, if I had 40 hours a week back, what, what could I do? Right. So uh, here, here we are. I awesome. haven't had a so paycheck since 2012. So 2012. Um, uh, so you, you started uh, 17 years ago. It started kind of on 2007, which was obviously – you know, the, 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 you know, the housing industry was getting tougher. There was, um, you know, obviously more uh, starting into short sales and you mentioned HUD homes. Um, I wouldn't mind just diving a little bit into just um, HUD homes, mainly because I think it's kind of top topical based on what's going on right now. Um, what was, what's the, what was the process or what is the process? Are you, do you still do some, some HUD home business or are you, have you, Sort of moved on. I have not done any in a in a long time. Uh, just I'll be honest with you, the motivation back in the day it was a five percent commission back in oh seven oh eight. So that was honestly my motivation. I was like, and you could there were no listings. I mean, everything was REO. So the, and I was a brand new agent. So really, the only thing really I could do was bring buyers and find buyers to work with because you know being brand new. So the process, basically, you would look online uh, and you would just see kind of uh, there'd be deadlines for the houses. You'd show the houses. You'd send out maybe houses to your to your clients. Hey, this house is coming up. Are you interested? We go look at it. Then, OK, here's the deadline. What do you want to bid? Where's your top? Where's your bottom? Where's wh what would you like to do? And so then you know, you would wait literally till two or three minutes left in the auction, you know, maybe even less. And try to try to see where everybody's kind of bidding in at, and try to put your best foot forward. Uh, you had to do everything; like everything was broken down. Even 
I know this is a hot topic right now, but even your commissions, you actually had to put in there everything, the whole nine yards. Everything was about the net price that was going to be for the for the seller uh, for for the HUD property, uh, and then you would get an email hopefully that night or the next morning. Hey, you won the auction, and then you had forty eight hours to literally bring wet paperwork. Not you can there was no electronic. You literally had to go down. I had to go down thirty forty five minutes from my house uh, into the city to actually drop it off, or you could FedEx it one or the other. Uh, and just hope it gets there on time. Uh, and then you would deliver the wet paperwork, pray that it was all done correctly. <laughs> and then, then you would move on, move on with, move on with the process. They would get their loan. They would do, you know, the normal, once you're under contract, it was pretty much a normal process from that point forward. Most of the homes were sold as is a good many of them were. So you really, the inspection was really just more for the buyers, for the buyer's information and whether they could tolerate the condition of the home and what they were going to have to do to it to, to, to get it reconditioned. So okay. that was pretty much, that was pretty much the process back then. I have not, I'm just truthfully, I've not done one in a while. Um, just, it is a very cumbersome, back then it was a cumbersome process and I've done it a few times since then. It seems to still be a cumbersome process. The, the right. last couple of times I've done it. So, you know, but that, that could be definitely something that may be coming back. Yeah, well, I, the more you know, the thing I was kind of interested in, I was sort of touching on is you, you know you uh, had to negotiate for a buyer agent commission in those in, in in those transactions, right? I did have to, yeah. You definitely the like it was the overall the overall net for the for the HUD, so that included you could. Yeah, even though they were giving so on a hundred thousand dollar house, you know they were going to give you a five. You could get as much as a five thousand dollar commission, but you could also mess with that to try to improve the bottom line for your buyer, right? You know, and try to yeah. and hopefully get them hopefully get them the deal. So, so this is a really interesting. Uh, you, uh, I, you know, I did a and, uh, this video probably or this uh, podcast probably go out in another month or so. So you have to look back to somewhere around uh, I think. So today's March 25th, and just uh, I think about eight days ago, I did a, a video on Instagram, and then I posted some stuff. But um, what what's your take on this phrase? Um, consumers are more service sensitive than commission sensitive. What where where do you sit in in that? Do you do you agree with that based on the, the just even your experience with HUD homes where you were negotiating on behalf of of buyers? So commission sensitive versus service sensitive. So I believe that that the the people that we're working with, they if you do a great job, they value the service and they see the value that you bring to the table. They see they see the value that you that you're bringing to the table. And so, um, yeah, that that is something something that they do. And I want to apologize for just a half a second. My kid just told me there's a hard lockdown at his school, and he's like trying to. So I think I think consumers are very service sensitive. You know, if you don't return a phone call, if you don't return a text, if you don't, you know, because I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we are we're we're in the business of serving somebody and being for, you know, if you're in a transaction with someone for 30, 45 days, maybe 60 days, you know, you're living with that person, basically. I mean, you're texting 20, 30, 40 times a day. You've got stuff, you've got emails flying, you've got all these things happening. And it's my job as a professional to manage that transaction, to provide them the best service. Glenn, you should, if I'm selling your house, you shouldn't feel like you're having any work to do other than just the stuff that the normal, hey, I need you to sign this or I need you to do that. You know, you, you should feel like that I am doing, that I'm earning what you're paying. You know, what I can make as an icon agent or did I work like what I would get paid as a teacher, you know? not downgrading teachers, but you kind of get what I'm getting at. Right, so, right. you know, what, what, what kind of, what kind of service did I provide for my clients that day? And I think client, there are definitely people that will value your service over what the commission is going to be. Cause I mean, as the old adage goes, you do get what you pay for. So if you, if you're going to really try to ne negotiate certain things out or, you know, that may not, that, that may not be your ideal client. And I think as agents, we also have to think about, who are who are ideal clients? Who we're we going to work with? Are we, do we want to work with people that value what we offer as a professional? Just like 
you can't go into a lawyer's office and negotiate their fee. <laughs> this doesn't happen. They're, they're a professional. You need them. Right. And so the same thing, do we have that same mindset when we're working? Are we, do we consider ourselves a professional in the same way as a lawyer or a doctor or a physical therapist or somebody else? You can't just go in there and just, Hey, I don't want to pay you whatever you're charging. I'll, I'll pay you this and expect them to do the same kind of job. Yeah, for, for sure. So now, um, obviously you're at eXp. I think, um, you've been at a couple, few other real estate brokerages, including I think KW. Um, uh, what was it that attracted you to EXP? Um, I guess we're going on about what uh, five years ago, six years ago. Yeah, it was about six years. We just started, just going into year number six now. And so it, it was really, it was interesting. I was actually at a, a continuing education class, and there was an agent there with a discount brokerage and. She kind of was like, what are you paying all those fees for? Like, why are you, why are you there? What are you, what are you doing over there? I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm doing good. I'm doing, I'm selling nine, ten million dollars a year in homes. I'm doing well. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Uh, and that was in December, and then my cap was going to set, you know, reset back January first. And someone had mentioned EXP back to me back in September of seventeen, and uh, I did. I was like, no, I bleed red and black. I'm going to be on the ALC again. I'm going to do all this stuff. Yeah. Now nah, I'm not interested. You know, I'm sure it's good for you, but yeah, not interested. Then another one of my buddies um, who I've got on some vacations with and done some things with, he said, you're not going to believe this. I'm leaving Remax. I said, really? Who are you leaving Remax for? And he'd been with them for 30 years and had like a 99, he was like literally only had to pay them 1%. He was hardly paying them anything because he'd been there for so long. I'm going to go with this EXP thing. And I said, oh, really? I've heard about it. And I said, but you know, I'm not really interested. I'm good for you, Pete great. You know, I'm, I bleed red and black. I'm good. And he said, can you just watch this video? Just do it for me, man. We're buds. Just, can you just watch this video? And so I watched the video. I was like, okay, this, this makes sense. Like I really, I liked what I saw. And then, but had he just led with Rob and Kim Campbell were coming and they've been my mentors for like 10 years and they were coming out of real estate retirement to help with the EXP in Atlanta. Uh, that probably would have gotten me. Okay. <laughs> I probably yeah. would have signed up right, right there on the spot. Yeah, you know, they had been my mentors for a long time. Even when I was at KW, I had to go up and talk at those meetings and quote unquote try to go with the gospel of the red book, right? But really I was getting I was getting trained. I had a lot of training from Robin Kim and Kathy Carter and a lot of other people that were that were that were all in my network that I was learning from. And so I learned how to do real estate the way they learned how to do real estate, which is not really the way the red book taught. But right. so that that's really what kind of got me. I really wasn't excited about real estate anymore. So I was, I was, it was getting to be like monotonous, you know, oh, going in and, and doing this and trying to do it this way. So, you know, when I saw the EXP model and I saw that some of my mentors were coming over uh, to, to EXP, I was like, well, you know, the success leaves clues. Yeah. And so I'm going to follow, follow the trail, follow what they're doing. They've, they've done a lot better than I've, I've done. So I want to, I want to, follow what they're doing because they they know something i don't know good stuff so now what where where do you specialize in i mean you're a five-time icon what what's your primary um business source what what's your lead gen are you focused more on sellers than buyers or vice versa you know what what is your what's your business look like and what's your kind of if you think about but if you have a if you were to have a superpower in your business, what would that be? So my superpower is that one first. My super superpower in business is picking up the phone and texting people back. They my clients know that they can get me if I'm up. They can get me. I don't have, I mean, good or bad. I don't not I don't have one of those messages on my phone. If it's after six o'clock, you can't reach me. If it's after seven o'clock, I return your call the next business day. If I'm up and available, now I still try, I do have, I do protect my family time and I do protect my time, with my children and, and loved ones or whatever. But, you know, if I'm up and I'm, I'm going to answer your text because again, I'm in the, sur I'm in the business of providing service. I'm in the business of, they obviously have a need. And if I'm still up at 10 o'clock and they're texting me, I'm going to try to provide that need so that they can have a better night's sleep that night. And so that, that is one thing that I just, Return phone calls, return texts, be timely, and act act in integrity. 
and wh whatever you do, people can tell when you're not authentic. Right. Um, so, um, and the, the answer to your other question as far as where, where my business comes from. Um, so I would, um, I want to thank you, Glenn, because out of last year, out of 56 transactions, 13 came from other EXP agents from around the country. So, you know, 13 incoming referrals and several outgoing referrals too that I, that I sent out as well. So, you know, that, that's, that's a big part of my business. And then obviously following up with past clients, been doing this for 17 years, have a lot of past clients, do get a lot of referral business. I just sent a referral to an icon agent in Jacksonville yesterday, one of my, one of my best clients. I've probably done like 10 transactions with him. He's grandma needs to sell their house down there, you know? So yeah, just that, that has been one of the, the best sources in my business is just creating relationships with other EXP agents in addition to my own, to my own past clients. And I do, I am partnered with realty.com, homes.com, uh, and I use the agent assist service, a lot of the affiliated services that EXP has provided us discounts on and good, th good things with. So I do use that for, you know, for incoming leads as well. Now, what, what are you using for a CRM? I use KV Core. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, which obviously we provide uh, that for, well, it's inside of the technology fee, but obviously it's uh, way, way less expensive than, uh, than getting it on, on your own, but it does a lot of stuff. Um, uh, one, uh, one last question. I know we're, we're running uh, up against uh, time here, but um, uh, you know, if you could give one piece of advice to uh, EXP agents uh, you know, based on your experience, what would it be? I would say stay around the campfire. And what, and what I mean by that, you know, when you, when, it, when I bring some on the EXP, it's like, you get, it's going to be like drinking through a fire hose for a little bit because we have so much that we offer so many different things you can do. So a lot, there's a lot to set up between you know, marketplace, I mean, workplace and all, all the things you have to set up uh, and to get, to get rolling. So I would say just stay around the campfire and then out of, we've, so many hours of training every week pick what you want to go to be consistent i'm going to go to training every week every monday at 12 o'clock i'm going to go and i'm going to do whatever that training class is or i'm going to pick block out one or two times during the week that you can go to some of these trainings because what you don't want to get overwhelmed you want to be able to use the tools that are being they're being given to you and then also you know again the go back to what i said earlier success leaves clues when you go to these classes you're hanging around successful people you're hanging around people that are that are doing things at a very high level. So making sure you continue to surround yourself with the right types of people and then showing up, showing up for the things that EXP has to offer, because it's a, it's a lot that that the company offers and picking what where is your niche going to be? Where where what are the things you're going to work on? Are you going to work on professional development? Are you going to work on self-development? Are you going to work on lead gen? Are you going to work on pick different things to work on? and pick different classes with people who have already done it and then actually do what they actually told you to do. Awesome. Well, well, Jamie, thanks for, for jumping on. Um, and, uh, where would, uh, if somebody wanted to kind of follow you, connect with you, what, what's sort of the best place to do that? Sure. Well, you can find me on Instagram, Jamie Parker, realtor on Instagram, of course, on Facebook, rock and agent on Facebook, Cell phone number is 404-483-7816. If you have any anybody for Atlanta, I'd love to be able to uh, show them what, what icon service looks like. Awesome. Well, great stuff. Thanks, Jamie. And uh, again, thanks, everyone, for listening to this uh, uh, episode of the Expansion Podcast. So with that, until um, next week, we'll, uh, we'll chat with you then. Thanks, everyone.